I did this research on Meriwether Lewis and William Clark and the core of discovery as suggested in a comment by a viewer a little over two years ago. The information about the famous Lewis and Clark expedition that came up in my research is presented here for your consideration. Was it true history or a real mystery? My name is Michelle Gibson. This is what we are told about the Lewis and Clark expedition. Also known as the Corps of Discovery, the Lewis and Clark expedition started on August 31st of 1803 and lasted until September 25th of 1806, with a mission to explore and map the newly acquired western portion of the country after the Louisiana Purchase. We are told the Louisiana Purchase was the acquisition of the territory of Louisiana by the United States from France with the signing of the Louisiana Purchase Treaty on April 30th of 1803 which was officially announced on July 4th of 1803. It was said to have doubled the size of the United States and paved the way for the nation's westward expansion. One of the negotiators with France for the terms of the Louisiana Purchase in 1803 on behalf of President Jefferson was the minor French nobleman Pierre Samuel de Pont de Namur, who was living in the United States at the time. His son, Eleuther Irene Dupont, a chemist and industrialist, founded the E.I. DuPont du Nemours and Company to manufacture gunpowder and explosives in 1802, with the DuPonts becoming one of America's richest families, with generations of influential businessmen, politicians, and philanthropists. Under the command of Captain Meriwether Lewis and his close friend, Lieutenant William Clark, the expedition was comprised of a select group of United States Army and civilian volunteers. They were commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson to one find a practical route across the western half of the country, two, to establish an American presence in this territory before European powers tried to claim it, three, to study plants, animal life, and geography, and four, to establish trade with the local American Indian tribes. This map is attributed to Captain Lewis and Lieutenant Clark from their expedition. President Thomas Jefferson chose Meriwether Lewis as the expedition's leader in 1803 and made sure Lewis became educated about things like medicinal cures, navigational astronomy, and the subject of the North American continent. In the summer of 1803, a keelboat was said to have been built to Lewis's specifications near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and that Lewis and his crew traveled in it immediately after it was finished in August down the Ohio River to meet up with Clark at what is now Clarksville, Indiana, in October of 1803 at the Falls of the Ohio, across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. We are told that in 1803, Lewis and Clark met a well-known Frenchman at Cahokia by the name of Nicolas Giraud, who agreed to let them camp on his land on the Wood River, at that time known as the Riviere du Bois. Known today as the Cahokia Mound State Historic Site, it is the site of a pre-Columbian Native American city that is considered the largest and most complex archaeological site north of the great pre-Columbian cities of Mexico, and is located directly across the Mississippi River from St. Louis, Missouri. The location of Camp Dubois at Wood River is almost directly north of Cahokia, both on the Illinois side of the Mississippi River. While I'm not seeing the remnants of a star fort in this Google Earth screenshot of the area, I am seeing that it is situated beside a location where two railroad lines merge into one, as well as a landscape filled with huge lots and large tanks that are apparently connected to the oil refineries in Wood River. Apparently, the city of Wood River was founded in 1907, with the establishment in the vicinity of a refinery for John D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil Company. Interesting that this would also be the historical location of the actual launch point for the Lewis and Clark expedition. John D. Rockefeller Sr. was a progenitor of the Rockefeller family and considered to be the wealthiest American of all time. He founded the Standard Oil Company in 1870. The expedition members stayed through the winter at Camp Dubois in present-day Wood River, awaiting the transfer of the lands of the Louisiana Purchase to the United States, which did not occur until March 9th and 10th of 1804. Jefferson's instructions to the expedition, we are told, were stated thus, The object of your mission is to explore the Missouri River and such principal streams of it, as by its course in communication with the waters of the Pacific Ocean, whether the Columbia, Oregon, Colorado, or any other river may offer the most direct and practicable water communication across this continent for the purpose of commerce. While the U.S. Mint prepared special silver medals for the expedition called Indian Peace Medals, 
with the portrait of Jefferson and inscribed with a message of friendship and peace distributed by the soldiers in it. They also had advanced weapons to display their military firepower, like the Gerondoni Air Rifle, a repeating rifle with a 20-round tubular magazine that was invented in 1779 by the Italian Bartolomeo Gerondoni. They also carried flags, gift bundles, medicine, and other items that they would need for their journey. The Corps of Discovery of approximately 45 members left Camp Dubois on May 14, 1804. Under Clark's command, they traveled up the Missouri River in their keelboat and two smaller vessels. To St. Charles, Missouri. Founded in 1765, it is called the third oldest city west of the Mississippi River. Lewis joined them six days later. The expedition set out the next afternoon, on the 21st of May. From St. Charles, the expedition followed the Missouri through what is now Kansas City, Missouri, where they camped at Caw Point on June 26th of 1804, where the Kansas River runs into the Missouri River. The way these two rivers merge together into one at Caw Point is another example of the many reasons I believe that so-called natural rivers are in actuality canal systems. Here are some other examples of the similarity of river confluences like what is seen at Caw Point. On the top left is Six Rivers National Forest in Eureka, California, compared with the confluences of the Mississippi and Missouri Rivers near St. Louis on the top right, of the Raccoon and Des Moines River near Des Moines, Iowa on the bottom left, and of the Blue Nile and White Nile near Khartoum in the African country of Sudan on the bottom right. It was here that Clark reported encountering a great number of parrot queets. The now extinct Carolina parakeet inhabited much of what became the United States at that time. The last known Carolina parakeet died in captivity at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1918, and the species was declared extinct in 1939. The Corps of Discovery famously landed next in the area surrounding the Missouri River of what is now Omaha, Nebraska, and Council Bluffs, Iowa. Here in this landscape of tall prairie grass and river, we are told, the Lewis and Clark expedition traveled, camped, hunted, and fished, met with the native people, and held council with the Indian chiefs of the area. The Lewis and Clark Monument Park in Council Bluffs, Iowa, memorializes what was said to be a historic meeting between the expedition and the Oto and Missouri Indians in 1804. It is important to note the old stonework seen on the memorial grounds. Council Bluffs was incorporated in 1853, receiving its name from this historic meeting. The Jesuit explorer and missionary Pierre Jean de Smet set up a mission in the late 1830s in what became Council Bluffs for several tribes that had been forced onto reservations there in the 1830s. This was what he wrote about one reservation there. There is 150 foot or 46 meter tall moon tower that was used for city lighting in this historic picture of Council Bluffs. We are told there were seven of what were called moon towers erected in Council Bluffs starting in 1887, and by 1908 they were all removed for a variety of given reasons too expensive, safety, etc. Next, they came to Omaha, said to have been founded in 1854 by speculators from Council Bluffs and that a river crossing called the Lone Tree Ferry gave the city its nickname, Gateway to the West. We are told that Omaha introduced this new West to the world when it hosted the 1898 Trans-Mississippi Exposition to showcase the development of the entire West from the Mississippi River to the Pacific Coast. And, as with what I have seen with regards to what was called the temporary nature of all of the massive and ornate architecture associated with exhibitions, expositions, and world's fairs, starting with the Crystal Palace Exposition of 1851 in London. Omaha was no exception to this story. This is the Old Market in Omaha, located near the Lewis and Clark Landing Park. I can't help but notice the similarity between the scenery in Omaha on the left and New Orleans on the right, down to the similarity of the design and angles of the street corner layout between the two buildings shown, much less the horse and buggies as well as the similarity between this building in Omaha's Old Market on the left and the Columbus Tower, also known as the Sentinel Building, in San Francisco on the right. Just up the Missouri River from Omaha, in present-day Fort Calhoun, Nebraska, is the location of Fort Atkinson State Historical Park, 
said to have been the first fort established west of the Missouri River in 1819 in what was called the unorganized region of the Louisiana Purchase of the United States. In use for only eight years, it was abandoned in 1827. The only death to occur on the expedition was said to have taken place on August 20th of 1804, when Sergeant Charles Floyd died, allegedly from acute appendicitis. We are told that his burial site was marked with a cedar post on which was inscribed his name and day of death, but that by 1857, the ground under the cedar post had eroded and slid into the river, and concerned citizens were said to have rescued his skeleton. This is the Floyd Monument today in Sioux City. We are told the concrete base of the monument was poured in 1900, at which time Floyd's remains were reinterred almost on the 100th anniversary of his death, on August 20th of 1900, and that the obelisk was completed in 1901. A minor historical character memorialized with an obelisk? The expedition held talks with the Sioux Nation near the confluence of the Missouri and Bad Rivers in what is now Fort Pierre, South Dakota. The meeting, which verged at one time on serious hostilities, took place in what is now Fisher's Lily Park in Fort Pierre, right where the Bad River enters the Missouri River in central South Dakota. Fort Pierre was the location of Fort Pierre Chouteau, one of the most important fur trade forts on the western frontier. Fort Pierre Chouteau was said to have been built in 1832 after John Jacob Astor, head of the American Fur Company, decided to expand operations into the upper Missouri River region in the 1820s. The German-born John Jacob Astor was the first prominent member of the Astor family and the first multimillionaire in the United States. He made his fortune after establishing a monopoly in the fur trade out west and real estate investment in and around New York City. This is the old Stock Growers Bank, said to have been built in 1903 and one of the oldest buildings in Fort Pierre. It has a mud-flooded appearance to me, with street-level windows, and it looks top-heavy. From Fort Pierre, the expedition continued up the Missouri River between present-day South Dakota and North Dakota. The Missouri River forms the eastern boundary of the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation, which straddles these two states. Fort Yates is the tribal headquarters for the Standing Rock Sioux. This is the memorial for Sacagawea, also known as Sacacawea, in Fort Yates. More on Sacagawea in a bit. The Standing Rock Reservation was the location of a major standoff between the Sioux and the Dakota Access Pipeline Project in 2016 and 2017. Standing Rock looks like a huge man-made mound or earthwork to me. I am not finding a mention of the Lewis and Clark Expedition doing anything of note in what is present-day Bismarck, the state capital of North Dakota, which the Missouri River passes through. Bismarck was said to have been founded in 1872 and North Dakota's capital city since 1889. Apparently there was a fire in Bismarck in 1898 that devastated the city, especially the downtown area. The city of Mandan, across the river from Bismarck, was founded in 1879 and named after the indigenous Mandan people of the region. Crying Hill is a sacred Native American heritage site located in Mandan. It overlooks the Missouri River Basin and is the highest place in the area. Like Standing Rock, Crying Hill has the appearance of a large mound or earthwork of some kind. The old Morton County Courthouse in Mandan was said to have been built in 1885 and gutted by fire in 1941. The next place we find the Corps of Discovery Landing was near present-day Washburn, North Dakota, where they built Fort Mandan to live in during the winter of 1804 and 1805. The town of Washburn was founded in 1882 and named after entrepreneur, politician, and soldier Cadwallader C. Washburn, who founded a mill that later became General Mills. A former governor of Wisconsin, this is the Cadwallader C. Washburn Monument and gravesite at Oak Creek Cemetery in La Crosse, Wisconsin. So we find yet another obelisk. The McLean County Courthouse in Washburn on the left was said to have been built in 1907, and I can't find a construction date given for the historic public school in Washburn on the right. Lewis and Clark continued on up the Missouri River in the territory of the Mandan Nation, where we are told they managed not to fight each other. Historically, the lands of the Mandan Nation were primarily in North Dakota around the upper Missouri River and its tributaries, the Heart and Knife River. While at Fort Mandan, Lewis and Clark met the French-Canadian fur trapper Toussaint Charbonneau and his 16-year-old pregnant Shoshone wife, Sacagawea, who both joined the expedition and served as translators for the expedition. Sacagawea, another minor historical character memorialized with an obelisk and later starting in 2000, the Sacagawea dollar coin. 
The Lewis and Clark expedition met with the Salish in Ross's Hole September 4th of 1805. Near the Sula on the Bitterroot River in the Bitterroot Valley of Montana, near what is now Idaho. From there, they followed the Missouri River to its headwaters and went over the Continental Divide at Limhi Pass on the now Idaho Montana border in the Beaverhead Mountains of the Bitterroot Range of the American Rockies. And from 1803 until the time of the Oregon Treaty, Limhi Pass marked the western border of the United States. The Corps of Discovery then descended from the mountains by way of the Clearwater River the Snake River, and the Columbia River. They would have passed right by the physical location of the Mary Hill Stonehenge on a bluff on the Washington side of the Columbia River, though this Stonehenge was said to have been commissioned in the early 20th century by the wealthy entrepreneur Sam Hill and dedicated on July 4th of 1918 as a memorial to the people who died in World War I. So it wouldn't have been there in the early 1800s, right? In addition to having a solstice alignment, it also has a nice alignment going on with the Milky Way. The Lewis and Clark expedition was said to have camped for three nights on the Columbia River near Salilo at the Rockport campsite, described as a natural fortification, in late October of 1805. The nearby city of the Dolls was said to be a major Native American trading center for at least 10,000 years, and that the general area is one of North America's most significant archaeological regions. The rising water filling the Dolls Dam submerged the Salilo Falls and the village of Salilo in 1957, which was the economic and cultural hub of Native Americans in the region and said to be the oldest continuously inhabited settlement in North America. As a matter of fact, the historic Granada Theater in the nearby city of the Dolls is on the Lewis and Clark Trail and still in use as a theater today. It was said to have been built in the Moorish Revival style between 1929 and its opening in 1930, and is famous for having been the first theater west of the Mississippi to show a talkie. The Corps of Discovery arrived at the Pacific Ocean around November 21st of 1805, near the location today of Astoria, Oregon, which was named after John Jacob Astor. This is the John Jacob Astor Hotel in Astoria, said to have been constructed between 1922 and 1923, and opened in 1924, and is one of the tallest buildings on the Oregon coast. Interesting to note, the world's first cable television system was set up in 1948, using an antenna on the roof of the Hotel Astoria. Also during the same time period the hotel was said to have been built, on December 8th of 1922, a fire destroyed almost all of downtown Astoria. Back in the winter of 1805, the members of the expedition were said to have built Fort Clatsop for shelter and protection and to officially establish the American presence there, with the American flag flying over the fort. I looked on Google Earth to see if I could detect the remnants of a star fort on the grounds of the Fort Clatsop National Monument, which I did not. If remnants are there, they are most likely covered by trees. But I happened to notice Fort Stevens State Park in close vicinity to Fort Clatsop. I typically find star forts in my research in pairs and clusters. Fort Stevens was said to have been constructed as an earthwork battery on the shore of the mouth of the Columbia River between 1863 and 1864 during the American Civil War, and built along with Fort Cape Disappointment at the same time, later known as Fort Canby, and Fort Columbia said to have been built between 1896 and 1904 as part of the Three Fort Harbor Defense System at the mouth of the Columbia River. During the winter at Fort Clatsop, Lewis committed himself to writing he filled many pages of his journals with valuable knowledge. So when I looked up a graphic for Lewis about this writing, I came upon the title page to this publication on the journals of Lewis and Clark, as well as a dedication to President Theodore Roosevelt on the 100th anniversary of the departure of the Lewis and Clark expedition. We are told Lewis was determined to remain at the fort until April 1st, but was still anxious to move out at the earliest opportunity. By March 22nd, the stormy weather had subsided, and the following morning, on March 23rd of 1806, the journey home began. The Corps of Discovery arrived back in St. Louis on September 23rd of 1806. We are told their visit to the Pacific Northwest, maps and proclamations of sovereignty with medals and flags were legal steps needed to claim title to each indigenous nation's lands under the doctrine of discovery, a concept of public international law expounded by the United States Supreme Court in a series of decisions in 1823. 
Under it, title to lands lay with the government, whose subjects traveled to and occupied a territory whose inhabitants were not subjects of a European Christian monarch. In other words, the Supreme Court ruled that the Native Americans did not own their land. Chief Justice John Marshall explained and applied the way that colonial powers laid claim to lands belonging to foreign sovereign nations during the Age of Discovery, and Chief Justice Marshall noted, among other things, the 1455 Papal Bull, Romanus Pontifex, and the 1493 Inter Cetera Bull in the Court's decisions to implement the Doctrine of Discovery. Meriwether Lewis had returned from the Lewis and Clark Expedition in 1806, was made Governor of Louisiana Territory in 1807 by Thomas Jefferson, and had made arrangements to publish his Corps of Discovery journals. For a point of information, he was initiated into Freemasonry between 1796 and 1797, from where he was born and raised in the Albemarle County, Virginia Colony, shortly after he joined the United States Army in 1795. Being governor of the Louisiana Territory didn't work too well for Lewis for a variety of reasons, and on September 3rd of 1809, he set out for Washington, D.C. to address financial issues that had arisen as a result of denied payments of drafts he had drawn against the War Department when he was governor, and he carried with him his journals for delivery to his publisher. He decided to go overland to Washington instead of via ship by way of New Orleans and stayed for the night in a place called Grinder's Stand, an inn on the historic Natchez Trace, southwest of Nashville, Tennessee. Gunshots were heard in the early morning hours, and he was said to have been found with multiple gunshot wounds to the head and gut. His remains were interred here at Grinder's Stand. We are told that Thomas Jefferson and some historians generally accepted Lewis's death as a suicide. What did he know? Who would have wanted him silenced? What happened to his journals? Did someone nicely get them along to his publisher for him, as was? The Louisiana Purchase and Corps of Discovery were said to have been showcased in two consecutive expositions. The first, the 1904 Louisiana Purchase Exposition in St. Louis, was said to have been held to celebrate the centennial of the 1803 Louisiana Purchase. The grounds were said to have been designed by landscape architect George Kessler on present-day Forest Park and Washington University campus. There were over 1,500 buildings connected by some 75 miles or 121 kilometers of roads and walkways. The prominent St. Louis architect, Isaac S. Taylor, was said to have been selected as the chairman of the Architectural Commission and director of works for the fair, supervising the overall design and construction. The exposition's Palace of Agriculture alone covered 20 acres or 81,000 meters squared. The 1905 Lewis and Clark Exposition was said to have been held in Portland, also to celebrate the centennial of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Numerous individuals were involved in the design and construction of the fairgrounds and buildings. The Olmsted brothers, John Charles and Frederick Law Jr., were given the credit for designing the grounds of the exposition, and architect Ian Lewis was the supervising architect of a board of seven architects that designed the buildings, which were said to be constructed with temporary plaster and wood materials and most of the buildings were torn down the following year. Called the world's largest log cabin, the forestry building at the exposition was said to have been built for the 1905 exposition from massive old-growth logs that, as one of the last surviving structures from the exposition, burned down in 1964, we are told from faulty electrical wiring. I can't help but notice what appears to be a correlation between the map of the Washita Empire on the left and the map of the Louisiana Purchase on the right. But... Who are the Washita? The Washita Moors, also known as the Ancient Ones and the Mound Builders, still exist to this day and have been recognized by the UN as the oldest indigenous civilization on Earth, with roots going back to ancient Mu, or Lemuria. But for some reason, the general public has never heard of them. Washita proper, the ancient imperial seat, is in northern Louisiana, in and around Monroe. How come we've never heard anything about the Washita? Quite simply, they don't want us to know. So far, I have found references to some of the wealthiest families in history in my research of the Louisiana Purchase and along the route of the Lewis and Clark Expedition, and I wasn't even trying. They were just there. The DuPont's involvement in negotiating the terms of the Louisiana Purchase from France, which coincided with the very beginnings of their gunpowder, explosive, and chemical empire. The Rockefellers and the Standard Oil Refinery in Wood River at the location of Camp Dubois, the official starting point of the expedition. John Jacob Astor and the American Fur Company's fur trading fort at Fort Pierre, a stopping point of the expedition in Sioux Country in present-day South Dakota, and other beginnings of the corporatocracy in which we have been living under. 
like the namesake of Washburn, North Dakota, the location of the expedition's Fort Mandan for their first winter, Cadwallader C. Washburn being a founder of General Mills. I think these are all clues found in the journey of the Lewis and Clark expedition about how a small number of families took control of the resources and wealth of the earth. I found three of the 13 names on this chart and the little bit of digging I have done here. If the Lewis and Clark expedition actually took place, what was its true purpose? I don't think it was the story of the great wilderness adventure that we have been taught, but actually a part of the process of the great cover-up and removal of an ancient, advanced Moorish civilization from collective awareness, not only in North America, but all over the earth.